flying in aircraft like Spitfires, Hurricanes, Gladiators, all of the aircraft of World War II is far, far more difficult and cramped and complicated than people might imagine. If I open the door, you'll see just how tight a space you have to fit into. Bearing in mind, I'd have my flying jacket, my parachute pack, which would be part of my seat cushion, uh, radio connections, oxygen connections and mask, all of those bits and pieces dangling around here. Very, very limited space in the cockpit. There's so little room in the cockpit that only the top of the stick moves. There isn't room for the whole stick to move like people might imagine. And there's knobs and buttons and switches and dials everywhere. There isn't really space in these early aircraft to lay the cockpit out like you might imagine in a modern aircraft that you get into today. Combat aircraft, of course, so it has some degree of armor plating and, and protection. There's armored glass immediately in front of the pilot there. That's about two inches thick armored glass there. Only very limited thicker glass on the side and everything else is non-armor plated. Perspex canopy, so there's no armor plating there. One very small piece of armor plating from my shoulders to the top of my head but nothing else in or around the aircraft is, has got any kind of armor plating or protection. Getting out of an aircraft in combat, if you have to bail out, if you're in face with that awful situation of having to jump out of your aircraft, again, a lot of people think, well, the pilot's got a parachute, he'll be okay. Far from it. It's one of the most dangerous and frightening things that a pilot would have to do. And their chance of surviving, jumping out of an aircraft in combat, is very, very low. Let me explain. Just imagine I'm flying along in my aircraft. For whatever reason, either the engine fails or I'm in combat and I'm, I'm being attacked and the aircraft is suddenly put out of control. I would have my canopy closed. Flying along. Suddenly, I've got to get out. There's a one or two second decision to make that I'm actually now having to get out of my aircraft. Canopy back, I've got to wind that back. I've now got 190 to 200 mile an hour slipstream bashing back into my head now. So I've got that huge slipstream coming into the cockpit. I've got to undo my oxygen and radio connections. I've got to undo my seat harness quickly and start to pull myself out. The aircraft's probably going violently out of control by this point, and I've let go of the control column as well. So I have to pull myself out if I've got time. I can find the door latch and open the door. Another huge blast of air as I go out through there. Stand up, I've completely let go of the controls now. No control over it whatsoever. The aircraft's beginning to spin and tumble and I've got to dive out through that gap and miss the tailplane, which is coming along at 200 miles an hour. And if I don't miss it, it will actually club me and probably kill me before I get much further than where you're standing with the camera. So the survival rate of getting out of a of a combat situation bailout is hugely, hugely low. Hence why by the end of World War II, with aircraft speeds getting around four or 500 miles an hour, we need the ejection seat. A vital part of landing the sea fire onto an aircraft carrier deck is of course using the arrestor hook, the hook which comes out of the back of the aircraft and picks up one of the arrestor wires that's running across the flight deck. That's essential to, to, to catch one of those wires and bring the aircraft to a halt safely so that it doesn't charge into any of the parked aircraft further forward on the flight deck. Just before landing, the pilot would reach down to his right-hand side and there's a toggle lever that he would pull uh, and that will deploy the deck hook, which is on a huge spring. It has to come out. There's no in-between. It's either stowed safely or it's very, very out and ready to use. So there's a massive spring which pushes that deck hook out and ready for use.